Hi everyone, my name is Jesus Rodriguez Espinosa. I'm the editor and founder of Orinoco Tribune. You can find us in orinocotribune.com uh, and uh, in social uh, media platforms with the same uh, um, handle. And uh, today I want to record a short video about uh, the recent corruption um, campaign, anti-corruption campaign launched by the Venezuelan government and its effects, its pros and, and contrasts, uh, and how most of Venezuelans here in Venezuela are seeing it. Uh, but before that, I just want to remind you that uh, uh, if you like uh, our content, please uh, subscribe, please, please like, share, comment our YouTube post or our, or our post in TikTok or Instagram uh, because we're planning to, to publish this content uh, in those platforms. And also, uh, I would uh, ask you to, to support us with the donations, which is very important and recently donations are not you know doing very good and it's understandable but anyways we we need to ask for those one uh, you know able to support us to do it and also you can support us uh joining our team so please uh follow the instructions that we have in social media in our social media accounts to do that uh, it's pretty easy uh and and and, and I believe that you will enjoy it uh, and now, uh, going back to the to the issue that I want to raise today, uh, I divided my my my. I wanted to divide, organize my words in four different parts. The first one is going to be about the facts. The second one is going to be about Chavista respond and effect on ordinary Venezuelans of this corruption, anti-corruption, you know, tirade campaign. Uh, then uh, I'm going to talk uh, about the achievements of this campaign, but also I want to talk at the end about the inconsistencies, the things that doesn't click pretty well, even in Chavista's heads. So first, uh, uh, going uh, on uh, the facts part, I want to say that basically what happened is that uh, uh, by the second half of March, the Venezuelan government with uh, uh, the Bolivar, the the new anti-corruption national police uh, and the public ministry uh, launched this camp campaign that first touched PDVSA and SUNACRIP, which is the agency and uh, the government agency in charge of dealing with uh, cryptocurrencies, including Petro, which is the and the official Venezuelan cryptocurrency. So uh, basically what happened is that uh, the police detained uh, the head of uh, Sunacrip, and uh, basically they, the Venezuelan authorities said that, that $3 billion were not received uh, as expected by the end of 2022 due to some sort of uh, uh, corruption scheme designed using cryptos that according to according to you know local news outlets uh, uh, are uh, i mean it's basically it's the tool that venezuela is using after the illegal U.S. sanctions to receive payments for the shipments of oil. The few shipments of oil that Venezuela is able to send abroad and that keeps, you know, and the Venezuelan economy alive. Uh, so so it was a terrible news. I mean, uh, this uh, uh, Josilet Ramirez is his name, the head of uh, Sunacrip, uh, was a person, uh, according to local news uh, outlets, very close to Tarek El Aizami. But also during that operation, they detained, uh, I mean, they detained several people from Sunakri, but uh, 
also on the in that initial round of you know um arrest uh the anti-corruption police also put in jail the mayor of Las Tejerías. That's a small town in Aragua State near Caracas uh, that suffered a landslide a few months ago and was in the news a lot. And uh, But also it was in the news before that because uh, uh, El Tren de Aragua, uh, uh, a criminal gang, uh, very important, um, uh, set base of operations there. And basically what the authorities finally uh, find out uh, was that the mayor of that town uh, was in collusion with these criminals from El Tren de Aragua, and they put him behind bars. Uh, the other part of the, of the, of the um, you know, anti-corruption campaign was uh, and happened and that happened during those and during that first round was the capture of three uh just uh i mean judges uh most of them in the uh anti-terrorist um court in caracas and uh and uh, and they were charged for uh selling uh, decisions, you know, court decisions, uh, in particular one favoring one criminal that was dealing with arms uh, uh, for uh, another important gang, criminal gang in Venezuela known as El Tren del Llano. Uh, and, uh, and they gather evidence uh, showing that they pay, they receive payments for releasing this person that was Initial, initially ca uh, captured by Venezuelan authorities for illegal armed dealings. Uh, then a few days later, uh, 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 some uh, executive from PDVSA were, were also captured. Uh, also was captured Ugbel Roa, also connected to the PDVSA crypto case. Uh, and uh, and allegedly Uberroa, which is a very important chavista, he was minister. He was uh, currently he he was currently uh, deputy for the National Assembly for the PSUV, and uh, and he basically was, uh, according to authorities, was. Uh, uh, meddling, I mean, embezzle, embezzling, uh, you know, money uh, and, and, and receiving payments for, for making deals or making, uh, paying suppliers in, for PDVSA. So Uguel Roa was captured in that second round uh, of uh, detentions or, or, or arrest. And uh, also uh, this, TVG, Corporación Venezolana de Guayana, which is a holding in the south of Venezuela that controls uh, a lot of heavy industries that are based in the south of Venezuela. Uh, uh, the whole board, executive board of CVG, uh, it might be translated like the Venezuelan Corporation of Guayana, but, uh, but most of the people know it as CVG. Uh, also were captured, including the president, uh, vice president, most of the board, uh, uh, presidents of, of the, the, the companies that belongs to the holding, like Sidor, for example. So, so uh, and that was the second round of arrest. And then uh, recently uh, there was another round of arrest where uh, Hugo Cabezas, uh, and other people connected to the judiciary mainly well captured and presented to trial. So, I mean, uh, right now, according to uh, Tarek um, William Saab, our attorney general, uh, about 51 people uh, are under arrest. And uh, and uh, and they are expecting to have more people under arrest, according to uh, to the words, you know, according the words of um, Tarek uh, William Saab. So that's basically what has been happening in recent days.
in uh, Venezuelan public opinion has been in, like shock with uh, these. I mean, it doesn't mean that. I mean, corruption um, issues. I mean, are not new for Venezuela, sadly. Uh, but uh, these are among the the worst and the and the first ones that uh, lead to the the tension and arrest of authorities. So in that sense, it's something positive, and and that takes me to something that I'm gonna talk in the third part of these few words. But before that, I wanna I want to talk in the second part about the Chavista response or the effect of these events on ordinary Venezuelans. So first of all, I have to admit that it was shocking, as I was just saying. Uh, uh not because we are not used to 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 corruption but because the amount you know the quantity of arrest people being arrested uh and 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 for the you know the the fact that it was uh it involved a lot of money uh so we are talking here about billions of dollars at least three billion dollars and some people are talking about more than that but I don't want to, you know, uh, talk without, you know, knowing exactly what happened. Um, uh, the the other thing that I want to mention here is that recognition to the government. I mean, most of the Chavista people recognize, as I already said, that 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 this is something that never happened before, at least at this level. You know, uh, at least at the level of, you know, putting in jail. Uh, I mean, the whole boards of uh, PDVSA or most of the board of PDVSA and most of the board of CBG, which always has been a very also important, you know, uh, company in Venezuela or an uh, institution. So in that sense, it was, uh, uh, there was a lot of recognition. There is a lot of recognition for the government for doing this. Uh, but of course, there was also rage uh, because the, this um, in Venezuela in uh, between October, November, December last year, suffered a sharp uh, devaluation of the Bolivar. And a lot of experts were talking about some uh, uh, cash flow issues that Venezuela was experiencing at that moment as the main cause for, you know, the Bolivar being devaluated during those months. And uh, now we know that uh, that you know a uh, cash flow issue was connected to this uh, corruption scheme, where you know three billion dollars at least uh, disappeared and did not arrive to the you know to the to the state to the government. So uh, in that sense, many people automatically made made the connections between you know what happened. And that those evaluations have a direct effect on, on ordinary Venezuelans on the prices of things, and inf on inflation, uh, on um, uh, economic insecurity. Uh, you know, among regular Venezuelans, and and, and a lot of people uh, were, and of course are still mad at that fact. You know that something like that was. I mean, so, some people connected to the government were capable of doing something like this in a moment so complex for Venezuela, which is, you know, the, the moment uh, uh, related to the U.S. sanctions, to the blockade, to the all, you know, the U.S. aggression against Venezuela in order to provoke a regime change that have not worked and it's not going to work, but it's affecting us a lot, you know, in our daily lives here in Venezuela. So those are the things that uh, I, I wanted to mention about this, uh, you know, elements uh, or, 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 or the effect that the, the, this uh, uh, campaign, anti-corruption campaign has on Chavistas and ordinary Venezuelans. Uh, and from the other side, now, you know, being in the third moment of my, of my of the words I wanted to share with you, uh, uh, I already said, I mean, it's the, the recognition of real actions against corruptions uh, with, 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 the, with the campaign, you know, taking place right now. And that's something very different from, from what happened in the past. I mean, we, we had been in Venezuela, tons of 
cases of corruption, and most of them end up being discovered uh, afterwards. You know, being discovered after the 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 corrupt people left the country. Uh, uh, so, so in this case, uh, uh, this have to be recognized like an achievement. You know, besides all the bad things, you know uh, that show corruption, uh, you know, like, like as, as an element of deterioration of the social tejido social, we say in Spanish, social tissue, maybe. So uh, anyway, I mean, the positive things is that the government is doing something uh, at all levels and, and, and using the word caiga quien caiga, so whatever happens. Uh, so, so that's one of the elements that I wanted to highlight in this part of my words. Also, the attempt to recover the stolen money is something to be highlighted. Uh, I mean, Venez Venezuelan authorities, even the National Assembly, passed in a first discussion. It, it is not approved yet, but it passed the first discussion, a new law to uh, cease uh, the assets stolen by corrupt people. So so that's a, an important signal and coherent signal uh, in order to let anyone uh, involved in corruption uh, dealings that uh, they are going to uh, be followed, that their assets are going to be followed. Of course, there's always ways to hide, uh, you know, uh, illegal money, but but I believe that it's going, it's going to, this is made to disencourage, you know, uh, people uh, in, you know, trying to get into the corruption, you know, world. So I believe that that's an important move also, coherent. Uh, also, uh, it's important to highlight that uh, within, you know, the things that I call achievements in this recent anti-corruption operation is the arrest of private operators. Uh, uh, the government didn't arrest, uh, uh, I mean, uh, only uh, public officials. Uh, the Venezuelan government also arrested private operators, businessmen, allegedly businessmen, business people, uh, that were uh, working in conjunction with these, uh, you know, corrupt uh, officials. So that's an important, and it's not a small number. I believe that is almost like equal, like half and half of the people, uh, of the 51 people being arrested, uh, at least half of them or close to half of them uh, belongs to the private sector, you know, to the business sector. So that's something important to highlight. And now to finish, I just want to mention that there are inconsistencies, you know, uh, things that, that doesn't click pretty well in the in the head of many uh, of many Chavistas, of many Venezuelans, of course. Uh, and the first one is the the situation connected to Argenis Torrealba and Alfredo Chirino's case. Those are two former executives that were put in jail. Uh, like in 2021, uh, after they make denunciations about corruption in PDVSA, very similar to the ones that are that were unveiled in this recent campaign, and uh, and 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 the and the bad scene about that is that many Chavista, many Venezuelans knew that these kids, guys. Uh, uh, First, denounced corruptions, and then they they were basically uh, put in jail as a retaliation by these mafias that are, you know, not only in PDVSA, but they spread, you know, uh, along the whole state. They, they spread within the public ministry. They spread in the judiciary. So they have tentacles, you know, moving all over the state to make them... Uh, live in impunity and attack those that threaten them. And, and in my opinion, that's what happened to these kids. And, and, and I talk about inconsistencies because the Venezuelan government 
has been in you know within the framework of this campaign has been inviting Venezuelans to denounce corruptions to 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 help the government fighting corruption but we have the bad example of these two kids that did that and ended up in jail. So that happened a lot. A lot of people in Venezuela, especially public officials, uh, uh, they uh, restrain themselves of, you know, taking actions against corruption because they know that they might end up uh, uh, ending bad. I mean, like, like Argenis and Alfredo that ended up being sentenced to jail. I mean, uh, being sent, and they were sentenced for uh, spreading uh, uh, classified information from PDVSA. And they initially accused them of treason. They accused them of connections with the CIA, a lot of things. Uh, and uh, the good thing is that a few days ago, uh, the Venezuelan judiciary uh, granted them full freedom uh not because they they how do you say that in english they exonerated them uh from the the charges that they were sentenced for but because they the the i mean the 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 legal you know term that they used was that the extinction of the of the term uh, which is not exactly true because they were still uh, going. I mean, they were. Uh, I mean, they received this uh, full uh, freedom uh, decision almost two years uh, before the, the real, you know, ending of his five-year sentence. So anyway, I mean, that's a good sign. But of course, uh, uh, there's something that needs to be done in this case. And we have tried in Orinoco Tribune to cover this situation connected to these uh, um, guys. I mean, these people are Jenny Sorrealba uh, and, and Alfredo Chirinos. And uh, we believe that they should, and uh, I understand that they will uh, elevate uh, uh, a legal, you know, um, strategy to the Supreme Court in Venezuela in order to receive a full uh, exoneration for the sentence uh, that they received. So I hope that that happened because that will mean that the government and the state will try to fix that terrible inconsistency that happened in that case. Of course, assuming that uh, they, I'm talking about Argenis and, and Alfredo, are really not involved in in what they were accused of. That I really believe they are not, but no one's no uh, in reality, you know, if you don't have the, the facts in your hands. So, but anyway, I hope that that happened and that uh, that leads to a real good investigation the responsible investigation of the facts that leads to a, a, a decision, a, a decision ba based in facts. Uh, uh, another element uh, around this particular part uh, is the previous denunciations of corruption that were uh, raised against Hugo Cabezas and uh, in, uh, uh, Tarek El Aizami, for example. I mean, there has been several denunciations against Hugo Cabezas, against El Aizami also, but not that many as against Hugo Cabezas. And, and that guy was minister uh, of the presidency for Hugo Chavez. He was the head of the identification office in Venezuela uh, and that, that, that is called SAIME, which is a very important agency in Venezuela. Uh, uh, he was governor for Trujillo State. He was, uh, I mean, he was at all levels of the government. He ended up being the head of one company that was nationalized a few days ago called Smurfy Paper of Venezuela, uh, which belongs to belonged to this uh, transnational of paper that is everywhere. Uh, and allegedly, he was uh, also, uh, you know, uh, 
practicing corruption then so so there's inconsistencies even the people from the communist party that i don't like too much lately i when i we were you know working in this uh news about the the detention, the arrest of Hugo Cabezas, we find out that Pedro Euse from PCB in 2014 make public denunciations against Hugo Cabezas. Pedro Euse is one of the leading figures in the Venezuelan Communist Party that recently has been very anti-Chavista, has been very anti-government, uh, and I don't you know, share their position, uh, that particular position that they have uh, uh, in this campaign against the government, but I have to recognize that they denounce Hugo Cabezas at the right moment and the government didn't do anything. And that's that. That's, you know, part of those inconsistencies that we need to fix in order to to fix Venezuelan society, uh, you know, to to eradicate or, or, or at least diminish the, the cancer of corruption that affects us. Another important issue uh, is the, the lack of information about Tarek El Aysami. Uh, I'm not saying, and I cannot say that all these people uh, are real, real criminals, but at least, you know, if you ilvanate the relations uh, that many of these people being arrested had, one of the, you know, common uh, denominator uh, is that most of the people, especially the ones connected to PDVSA and the and the corruption there, were very close to Tarek El Aysami. Tarek El Aysami was our minister of oil, and he resigns, which is great, but no one knows what is happening with him. No one knows if he is going to be arrested. If you ask me, not having the facts in my hands or evidence in my hands, I believe that at least he should be arrested. Uh, but of course, again, uh, I have to be responsible and say that I don't have all the elements in my hands to make a, you know, a responsible opinion. Uh, but uh, anyway, I mean, I already said uh, what I believe is important to say about that, and. Uh, because there's a risk if the, if Tarek Al Asami is really connected to this corruption, you know, schemes, uh, there's a risk that if he is not arrested, he might leave the country like many, many, many other Venezuelan uh, PDVSA executives. So, so that's something that uh, needs to be fixed, if you ask me. And I believe that that might happen eventually. Unless there are no proof, you know, connecting him to this uh, criminals or elect criminals. And the other thing that is important to highlight, uh, talking about inconsistency, is the anti sanctions law. I mean, uh, uh, a lot of these denunciations uh, of corruption, especially the ones in PDVSA, a lot of people say that, that this. Uh, this corruption happened because the anti-corruption law. But when you see the denunciation of Argenis Torrialba and Alfredo Chirinos, uh, you, you know that this, uh, these corruption schemes uh, were happening at least since 2017 or 2016. So, uh, I mean, of course they are connected to U.S. sanctions because uh, during those years, the U.S. criminal attack against Venezuela forced PDVSA to evade regular channels and procedures sometimes in order to manage to get our oil uh, being exported. I mean, reach international markets. In that way, uh, uh, PDVSA uh, received uh, its revenue, its profits. So, uh, I mean, you cannot blame all these denunciations that Alfredo and Argenis did and, 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 and to the, to the anti-sanctions law. But of course, there's something there that uh, I believe need to be evaluated or, you know, because uh, this law might open the door for things like this to happen. 
And what is needed is to, uh, I mean, there should be some way in which the state can build a, a procedure that eliminates the risk of uh, repetition of, uh, you know, of these corruption practices in PDVSA based on selling oil to, to phantom uh, companies and that are not the traditional, you know, suppliers or shippers or or dealers uh, of PDVSA, um, keep doing. Uh, 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 I mean that PDVSA keep doing the business, but maybe with that kind of companies because those are the ones that that, that the only ones that can do that PDVSA can do business with under current circumstances, but at least that the government set a, a, a procedure uh, in order to to avoid uh, that the oil uh, goes to those companies and, and, and they don't pay back to Venezuela, which is basically what has been denounced by Argenis and Alfredo and also within the framework of this PDVSA crypto scandal. So everything also at the end of the day have something to do with the U.S. sanctions, uh, illegal sanctions. So that's basically it. Those are the things that I wanted to tell you. Uh, I, I just wanted to share my my opinion about this case. And uh, and I hope that you enjoy it. And please feel free to, to, to make your comments, to click the subscribe button uh, um, in, in our in our channel, in our, you know, uh, social media platforms and, and like and join our account. And uh, I invite you to follow orinocotribune.com uh, that uh, uh, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a, a unique website that that we try to, where we try to present uh, fresh um, and, uh, and accurate information, responsible information about uh, what is happening in Venezuela, in Latin America, and around the world, of course, with a Chavista perspective, with a socialist perspective. So thank you again for your time. Un abrazo.